This is the first video in my transformation of this 6,000 square foot abandoned building into my dream home and workshop. Now there's no functioning bathrooms, so the first thing we need to do is get this half bath in the shop functional. And this thing is just disgusting. It's been rotting for the last six years untouched. So we're gonna totally make it over, do a concrete sink, install some new wall tiles, do concrete floors, and of course, get a new toilet. I don't think you're gonna recognize it, but let's get into it. For those of you wondering about cost, I did this whole renovation for under 500 bucks, and I will break down all those costs for you towards the end of the video, and Thunderbill. First things first, we're gonna to get to demo, and this is probably gonna be the most disgusting part. Where's my first? Oh God. Hold my plunger. Ugh. This is not how I prefer. I'm afraid of the porcelain god. Whoa. So actually, I think we can use this mirror. Might need to put a new frame on it, but uh, yeah, that might be one thing that's actually okay here. I thought I was gonna need an expensive rotary hammer to get the tile off the floor, but fortunately for me, the previous tile installer had done a pretty mediocre job, which made the tiles easy to remove with a crowbar and mallet. Now it's time for surface prep before we do the wall and floor tile. So I just made a small change in plans. Instead of doing a polished concrete floor, I'm actually gonna do tile. I found some tiles in my old condo left over from a renovation in a bathroom I did there. I think it'll work perfectly and be just easier because I don't have time to go rent all the equipment that would be necessary to polish a floor that has this much crap on it. I've already gone off camera with an angle grinder and ground off all the loose stuff. We're gonna do some self-leveling underlayment, put that down, and then we can lay the floor tile as well. One more thing, true story in my old loft, I was woken up in the middle of the night during a bathroom renovation, and my neighbor was calling to tell me that there was gray junk dripping out of his ceiling into his toilet in his bathroom, and it turns out that the contractor I had hired had not sealed the flange properly. The self-leveling concrete was dripping through the toilet flange to the floor below. Probably went with overkill. I got this like super thick waterproof patch and seal tape and we're gonna seal off the flange with that before we pour. Before pouring, I applied Level Quick Primer on the existing concrete floor. This will help the self-leveling underlayment stick. I then poured the self-leveling underlayment and spread it around with a putty knife to make sure it leveled out. Using it to level the floor is especially critical when laying larger tiles like the six by 24 tiles I'll be using here. Without a level floor, large tiles can teeter-totter on high points and it can be difficult or even impossible to level the tiles with one another. We're gonna start off on the walls by just sanding them down, cleaning them, putting a layer of primer on them so that the tile mastic will stick better. Now let's head back to my old workshop to make the sink and countertop. The plan is a small ramp sink made from concrete which will sit on a wood countertop made from Douglas fir 4x4s. I'm making the ramp sink mold from 3 quarter inch melamine sheet and quarter inch marker board, which you can get in the project panel section of your big box store. Okay, I know. This form for the sink looks a little funky right now. There's a lot of weird gaps and yeah, it ain't so pretty. But the reason for that is that, well, basically I wanted to avoid math. All the surfaces at the bottom of the sink need to slope towards a low point where the drain is so that the sink will drain properly. Instead of calculating a bunch of crazy compound miter joints to get everything to fit together perfectly, I kind of just glued it all in here. Then I can come back with Bondo, fill in these gaps, sand it all down, and it will come out nice and smooth, I promise.
as you'll see later, using a power sander here probably wasn't the best idea because it sanded through some of the melamine surface. Bondo is pretty easy to shape by hand sanding, so I should have just taken a bit more time to sand by hand. Despite the uneven appearance of the sink mold, it felt like it was sanded smooth when I ran my fingers over it. And this is ultimately for a workshop bathroom, so I just applied a few layers of paste wax to seal the exposed areas and pressed onward. And as always, I'm using black silicone caulk and a fondant ball tool to seal the seams in the form. You need to create holes in the sink for the drain and for the faucet. And in order to do that, I've just cut out pieces of foam, basically circles and squares of foam that I can stack and silicone into place to create those holes we can put the drain and faucet through. The size of holes you're gonna need is gonna vary depending on the hardware you choose for your project, so make sure you consult those instructions that come with it and create the right size hole because it's really hard to create holes in concrete after you're done. For this sink, I'm using Fishtone's HP50 High Performance Concrete Mix with PVA fibers, which will give me a really nice finish straight out of the form and be much stronger than any mix you can get from a big box store. And I'll link to all the concrete products that I used in the video description if you're interested. I let the concrete cure overnight, and then it was time to demold and see the results. In the spots where I sanded away the melamine, there's definitely a difference in the texture, but it's more texture. It's actually pretty flat. The shape is good. Um, also, a Bondo stuck in a couple places, but we should be able to clean that up with some acetone. All in all, very happy how this is looking. We'll just have to clean it up a little bit, do a little post-processing, maybe a slurry coat, and it should be good to go. I took the sink back to my future workshop to apply the concrete sealer. While I'm here, I want to tell you about the Simply Safe security system that I'm installing at the new shop. The plan is to get the shop up and running first and then renovate the upstairs to live in, which means my tools are going to live here before I do and I need them to be safe when I'm not here. I've been doing independent research on my security needs and basically Simply Safe's modern system is the comprehensive solution for everything I need inside and out. I'm installing a video doorbell and outdoor cameras, indoor sensors galore, motion sensors, glass break sensors, water sensors, smoke detectors, more cameras, you get the picture. All coordinated by Simply Safe's home base and supported by Simply Safe's 24/7 professional monitoring. So one thing I'm really geeked about is this new Simply Safe lock. The first thing I'm doing after the bathroom is replacing this door because, yeah, look at it. I'm totally ADD, so I will inevitably forget to lock this door at some point, and when I do, the Simply Safe lock is going to have my back to ensure that it's locked. It automatically locks on a timer, and I can unlock or lock it from anywhere in the world. The lock also keeps track of everyone who comes and goes and allows me to grant access codes to guests from anywhere in the world. This is gonna be super handy during the renovation for letting subcontractors in and out. I won't have to worry about giving out physical keys and having copies of my keys out there in the wild. It's not just me. Tech experts like The Verge, PCMag, CNET are all recommending Simply Safe. So I know what you're thinking. All this must cost a fortune, right? No. With Simply Safe's fair and honest pricing, it's only 50 cents a day no contract, you've got nothing to lose. Head on over to simplysafe.com/mudustrial to check it out for yourself. 
Much love to Simply Safe for supporting this video and for protecting my home and shop. Now, let's get back to my old workshop and make the wood countertop. I'm going for a modern industrial style in this bathroom. To get the modern into the modern industrial, I ran the 4x4s through my planer to get clean surfaces and sharp corners. After planing and cutting the 4x4s to length, it was time for the glue up. I used dominoes to help with the alignment during the glue up, but this step is optional. You could also use biscuits or dowels. In fact, with lumber this thick, you don't really need reinforcement at all and could go with glue only. Note that I left a gap in the middle of the glue up, which provides space for the drain and water lines to pass through from the concrete sink. After removing the clamps, it was back to the new shop where I sanded down the wood base. Since I built the wood base off-site, I made it a bit wider than the wall where it would be installed. This way, when I got it to the install site, I could use my circular saw to cut it to the exact width of the wall. I could then route out a cavity in the wood for the concrete sink to rest in. I set up straight edge guides to get a clean outline at the edges of the cavity. I then switched to a bottom cleaning bit on the router and worked from the middle of the cavity outwards towards the edges I'd routed earlier. Once I got close to those edge outlines, I switched over to a flush trim bit and use the original edge outline as a template to cut the rest of the cavity. Note that this order of operations is pretty important here. If I'd started by fully routing out the edges, I would have ended up in a no man's land with nowhere to rest the router on when I got to the middle of the cavity. To finish the sink off, I applied three coats of Total Boats Marine Varnish, thinning the first coat so that it would penetrate the wood and provide deeper protection. So it's time to start the tile installation and I did a little research. It sounds like some people do the floor first, some do the walls first. You can do kind of either way. To me, it makes sense to do the floors first and then kind of tile over them like so with the walls. So this is actually my first time ever installing floor tile. And because I've got a bunch of renovation coming up and just kind of to make it go easier, I decided to invest in this wet tile saw. So let's get to it. I used a polymer modified mortar mix and spread it on the floor with a half inch square notch trowel. As I placed the six by 24 inch porcelain tiles into the mortar, I used a really cool spacer that also allows you to level out adjacent tiles in order to align and level the tiles at once. So one little asterisk here, if you're tiling a bathroom with a tub or shower, you'd want to lay down a waterproof membrane on the floor before tiling. But since this is just a half bath, we can install the tile right over the self-leveling underlayment. To make curved cuts and fit the porcelain tile around the toilet flange, I used an angle grinder with a diamond cutoff wheel. I found that if you carefully score the surface of the tile and then make multiple passes around the scored line, you can get fairly accurate cuts. Making good progress here and now it's time to install this 12 by 24 wall tile. So I've got this laser level set up here that's marking a line at just over 48 and a half inches high which will give us room to install exactly two of these high and do a half wall height for the tile all the way around. Mm. 
I am way over my head with these large format. They're just slipping like crazy. And I think it's because these walls are just not perfectly flat. From what I'm reading now online, and my panic research is that you need perfectly flat walls to install these. I'm gonna save these, use these somewhere else, cut my losses before I get too deep, and I guess go get some different tile. Ah. I had a bit of a moment there, but got my composure now, and I think I've got a plan. Scrapping the large format tiles for this one, I've got plenty of projects, I'll find a use for them down the road. Actually, like, that might be a good video because there's, from what I'm reading, a whole lot more to doing the large format tiles. So, what's the plan now? Uh, I just ran out to Home Depot, grabbed some of this Henry Feather Finish stuff. It's pretty inexpensive. It's basically just a concrete skim coat. I can lay it right on the drywall. I've done this before, and it gives a really cool look of basically like, it looks like a concrete wall when it's done. And just throw three or four layers on the drywall. You sand it down, throw some sealer on it, and I think it'll look cool. So, let's try that out. The first coat is applied really thin to give subsequent coats something to bond to. To apply it, I used the flat side of the same notch trowel I used for the floor tile, as well as a magic trowel, which is essentially just a squeegee trowel. It really is just a personal preference whether you use one or both of these tools. The metal trowel will give you a bit more texture, while the magic trowel will generally give you a smoother surface. Feather finish dries in about 30 minutes, so it's easy to do multiple coats the same day. After applying three coats of the feather finish, I was happy how the concrete wall looked, so I moved on to the last step before the final install, grouting the floor tile. Normally you're going to use a sort of marker-like device to get down in the grout lines to seal them, but uh, I tested this Tough Duck spray sealer that kind of gets all over on some of the scrap tiles that I had, some of the cutoffs, and I like the way it looks just fine on those, so I'm okay with going ahead and spraying it on here. Uh, I've had pretty good luck with this stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it and roll with it. Since the Tough Duck is a penetrating sealer and doesn't build up on the surface, and I like the way the walls look naturally, I decided to use it on the walls too. I'm really happy with the natural concrete look this achieved. So now we gotta deal with the floor to wall transition because it's just not very clean right now. We can't just leave it like it is. What I'm gonna do is just cut two inch strips of the same tile I used on the floor and make some trim out of the tile. If I were to do this again, I'd probably just apply the trim at the same time as I applied the floor tile and use grout instead of silicone as I think this would have a more consistent look and we really don't need the silicones waterproofing in this bathroom. For the final install, let's break down those costs. Starting off, surface prep materials, underlayment, primer, etc., about 75 bucks. Concrete sink, basically just the concrete in the melamine form, about 95 bucks. Then you've got the wood counter, that was cheap, just 15 bucks basically, for Douglas fir 4x4s. Moving on to the concrete walls, save some money there because the feather finish was only about 40 bucks. I splurged a bit on the drain and faucet, so that was about 85 bucks. The new toilet was 100 bucks, and then I had about $40 on miscellaneous tools and such. The floor tiles, those were free for me. Uh, you would have to add 100 or so to my total, but it'd still be pretty cheap. My total, as you can see, under 500 bucks, so Pretty sweet, I'm really happy uh, what I'm getting here. Now let's get to the final install and get that sink in there. Show us sink! To support this pretty darn heavy sink, I'm using three heavy duty steel brackets which I made sure were screwed into wall studs. All right, let's give it a, let's give it a strength test. I'm gonna kind of put my hands where the weight of the sink might be and hope for the best. Oh, well, that, that seems pretty good. Mm. Yep. I think we're good. 
It's not going anywhere. For the final cherry on top of this bathroom, it's time to install the I was definitely a bit nervous since I'd never installed a toilet before, but it turned out not to be a big deal. I watched a simple how-to video from this old house, followed the pictorial instructions that came with my toilet, and after this, the whole thing took about 45 minutes start to finish. Well, this is normally the time when I would show you everything 100% done, turn on the faucet, all that sort of stuff. But uh, unfortunately, as most of you probably are aware watching this round when it comes out, it's not a normal time right now. Uh, we're under a stay at home order here in Chicago, which means the contractors I had lined up to come and close the bathroom with drywall can't come do that, that's on hold. I'm waiting for a P-trap extension tube to come in from Amazon and that's backed up and delayed on shipping. So we're just gonna roll with it as it is. It's kind of a showroom floor open model bathroom at this point, which does give you a pretty good idea of the aesthetic and I'm pretty happy how it's coming out. You also wanna go check out the abandoned building tour I just released and I talk about how I'm gonna turn this abandoned building into my home and workshop and some of the plans I've got for it. Make sure you subscribe as well so you can share all the ups and downs with me. I'd love to have you as I go on this crazy journey. I hope everyone is staying in, staying safe and doing well. That is it for this time and I will see you next time.